Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another Mandate of Heaven preview video. Today we'll be covering Cao Cao, the strategic mastermind. So he gets a new starting location in the year 182 for the start of the Mandate of Heaven DLC. Uh, it's right over here in the south. Uh, he is a strategic mastermind, still the same, and his uh, new starting location is given a difficulty of hard uh, versus the easy that he was given around Chen for the 190 start. He's still the same commander, uh, minus 10% upkeep for cavalry and plus 15 military supplies. Uh, these are still the same bonuses. And his faction specialization is still the same credibility, uh, which is a resource that you get to uh, influence how different factions uh, view each other, uh, including yourself. And you can also use it to start proxy wars. Uh, so your uh, playstyle focus is diplomatic manipulation. And your unique features are still the Tiger and Leopard Cavalry and the Heavy Tiger and Leopard Cavalry. Available to all generals at level 3 and 6. Um, these are good uh, charge damage cavalry with good armor. Uh, also a small amount of uh, range block chance. Uh, they have very low uh, after charge damage. So you mainly want to charge and repeat charge with these guys. Your faction unique building chain. Uh, includes the farming garrison. This is for the rice and grain farm lands and uh, as we covered before the rice farm land are very very strong as they give you a faction wide replenishment bonus. So starting in the south here definitely create some options where you could uh, stay in the south and grab all the rice uh, patties, uh, build them into farming garrisons and enjoy very very high replenishment rate uh, almost similar to Zhang Jiao's replenishment rate in this game. Uh, um, other than that, you also have the Tuntian Conscription Building. This is a unique conscription building chain for Cao Cao. Not only does it uh, create the basic reduction of uh, redeployment, uh, starting rank, uh, seasonal retinue, you also get uh, food uh, from this. Uh, Tuntian itself, the term, uh, basically means having your garrison troops also become farmers when you're not fighting. Uh, it's just a policy. That's why you get uh, food from farming from this conscription building. Noteworthy characters changed up quite a bit, uh, whereas in the base game you start out with Xia Hou Dun and Xia Hou Yuan. Uh, right now you start out with Cao Ren. Um, it's a shame that he doesn't have his unique model, but I think eventually they'll get him. Uh, but for now, let's jump into the game. We're still doing legendary, legendary start, 40 minutes battle timers. So see you guys in the game. Alright, we're loaded up into the game here. Uh, the good servant. Some things are made to last while others wither. The assessment made about his person played on Cao Cao's mind. In times of peace, you will be a good servant. Cao Cao felt that his destiny was not in serving others, but he believed in the dynasty of the Han. In the time of strife, you will be a dangerous chief. This made Cao Cao smile and wondered what he would make of this empire were he in control. Uh, so this is just a... Um, they broke up the quote that's used to describe Cao Cao a lot. Basically it says, in times of peace, you'll be a good servant, and in times of strife, you'll be a dangerous chief. Um, basically saying that Cao Cao has the talent. Um, if during peaceful time, he can be a great administrator or official that serves the empire. But in times of chaos, uh, like Littlefinger says, chaos is a ladder. Cao Cao has the potential to rise up. And very accurate. Uh, so our job right now is to weed out crime and corruption and uh, your effort will be rewarded in time. So we're going to take these riddles uh, as they are. Uh, for our Liu Bei campaign, we took our first territory quite early. Uh, apparently, if you didn't take any territories, you'd be given territories as long as you follow the missions. So we're going to try to our best to follow the missions and uh, play it out. So Magistrate's Halt foretells a change in the wind. And once again, we're beating up our looter friend, uh, Shen Shi. And our reward will be... 50% campaign movement range for 6 turns. So it seems like the game wants us to move around quite a bit. And Shen Shi has 2 cavalry. Uh, looters really like their cavalry. Uh, once again we're regionless. So we get the same bonus of minus 50% retinue upkeep. And plus 50% uh, 50 forage military supplies. Uh, we get a few items. Builder, Jade Horse and Herdsman. Herdsman's going to help a lot with the wedge formation. And we start out, we don't even start out with Haren. Okay, I guess he will join us. That's my guess. We start out with our wife, Lady Bian. Um, we also start out with traits. Um, Lady Bian does not have suspicious. I think they changed her traits up. Incompetent, 
uncomplicated and modest. Interesting. Uh, we still have our legendary uh, weapon, Trust of God. Um, very nice sword. A lot of authority point, not very uh, heavy on the offense. Uh, but you get immune to fear and terror. You lose out a lot of uh, instinct with this sword. But it's still decent with a 24 authority stat. Uh, our armor um, gets a lot of stat, 18 points, 30% range block chance, 12% speed. It's a lot better than a lot of the other armors that uh, the new characters are getting, which are just getting 15 points of base stat. Uh, you also get your legendary Shadow Runner, 25% uh, evading capture, 5% of avoiding ambushes, and surprisingly part of a set with Jade Horseman. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is Jade Horse, not Jade Horseman. Ah, uh, so close. 30% charge bonus? That would be sweet. Um, we'll get Herdsman in here. Alright, so we actually don't need him to have this, but it's fine. He does have one archer unit. Um, if you guys are playing for the first time, uh, your credibility is a resource that's always increasing every turn. And there is three tier breakdown. There's a hundred point max. The three tiers are 25 points and 75 points. And the reason why they break down here is not because of, um, well, it's, it's because of how much you gain. So I think this is a different change. So if you're below 25 points, you get three points every turn. If you're between 25 and 75, you get two points every turn. And then above 75, you get one every turn. Uh, so obviously you want to use these as well. Every 25 points can be used to influence the diplomatic attitude between two factions. They can be a positive change or a negative change. So you can make people like you more or like, well, you can make A and B like each other more, or you can make A and B hate each other more, and you can be A and B. So you can, you can make someone like you or someone hate you, or you can uh, make a hate B where you're not even in uh, the diplomatic relationship uh, of the uh, relationship that you're trying to influence. Also, you can use 75 points to trigger a proxy war where you can convince A to attack B. And once again, you can be in um, the proxy war decision, but most likely since you're doing a proxy war, you don't want to put yourself in that position because you can just simply declare war. Uh, yourself rather than using up your resource to do um, to, to do that basically and how you want to use your proxy wars are very different from how you want to use uh, your influencing of diplomatic attitude because when you make a like B or a uh, hate B you don't have any um, diplomatic value to it uh, by diplomatic value I mean like let's say I'm offering our dad uh, Cao Song, um or anyone, a non-aggression pack, right? Let's say I'm offering Mata a non-aggression pack. This is his attitude towards us, minus uh, 0 0.7. So there's an attitude involved. When you are trying to manipulate them, let's say I want to make Ma Teng say hate the emperor, right? This is a positive, oh, this is a positive uh, manipulation. Oh, we pick negative, uh, negative manipulation. So he will hate them by 25 points. There is no value here. But if we give them a proxy war, we don't have enough points right now. But once we do, uh, if we ask someone into a proxy war with someone else, they will give you their attitude towards that war. Now the influencing factor could be how strong is A versus B? How close is A versus B? And what's the current relationship between A versus B? So if you want to balance those out, Maybe you're looking for not chaos, but you just want to get money from your credibility points. What you could do is pick a really strong faction and ask them to start a war with a really weak faction. That way you get a big surplus of diplomatic value. So you might get like plus 14 uh, points of diplomatic value. They, like, they really want to go to war with that faction uh, because they're stronger, because they're closer, because their uh, strategic location uh, make it that they want to attack that faction, then you can extract money uh, through that trade deal with them while getting the proxy war on. And sometimes you might want the two strongest factions to fight each other. 
and they might not want to fight, but like peace deals, you can offer them other items in that trade deal to make them start that fight. Like the diplomatic value could be very negative, it could be negative 20, and you could pay them to start that war. So it's a very interesting uh, mechanism that you could use in the early game to maybe just cash out. And in the late game, you can create some wars between very strong factions. So uh, that's the explanation of uh, credibility resource. And I don't think we need to do much. Uh, we can make um, our wife our heir because Taong is only five. So let's do that. And our dad is actually a faction leader. Oh, I like his title. Ambitious Tycoon. He was super greedy. Super, super greedy. Basically used our grandfather's resources to be as corrupt as possible. Did Lady Bian get a title? No. She's just magistrate. But she's still a very decent um, heir. Because uh, you get plus 5% income from all sources. Um, anything else from these? No, that's it. Everything else is on herself. Um, but she also starts out in a pretty nice place on her uh, skill tree to pick up flexibility, uh, dignity, nobili nobility, and understanding. And I think we pretty much wrapped up. We can just start this fight. We actually don't have any anti-cav, so we just have to charge them. Yeah. Um... I guess we'll show off this unit, so we'll just do it real quick. Alright, we're loaded up in here. Um, nothing much. We're just going to basically run into them with our cavalry and fight them. Going to move up to here. We do have formations here, which is nice. I don't want to charge them in the river, so what we're going to do is let them cross, and we'll charge them before they uh, land. We're gonna hide these guys in the back. Definitely hide them in the back. Um. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, charge resistance. Hmm. We should probably use that when they get close. We should be able to win this fight. All right, let's get ready. So this unit right here, if we look at it, uh, very high charge damage. Uh, the attacks, uh, the melee damage is the same as Spear Guard, 27, 23. Almost have that memorized by now. High morale, 35% range block chance. Not so fast because of the armor. All right, time to go. Time to go. And then maybe we'll try to swarm them. We'll get there before we execute him. He still have a little bit of health. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's about over. Okay, nice. All right, we'll chase them down, get some experience on him. Yeah, they're not very strong once in melee, though, so not the strongest unit. All right, we're just going to end this right here. There's no point to keep playing. Alrighty. We'll get money. Alright, let's see what our new mission is. It's very similar to Liu Bei. Raise one additional unit. I think the game is just trying to teach you how to recruit if you're playing for the first time. Um, Magistrate apprehends a thief. Move any move any character into Yangzhou Toolmaker. Get 5 plus credibility. Okay. Ah. Okay. 
Huyang, so he wants us to go into many different places. Lujiang. So, look at the mission markers. Move into here, here, and here. Well, they're kind of linked. We can kind of do this loop. Um, I think we'll be getting a fight at each of the locations. Um, we could summon our wife out, give her a few experience. She has some units as well. There's no other use for our money right now. Um, I'm going to move into the territory and then summer her. And then I think I'm going to stick to the edge here. Because then we can move into the lumberyard afterward. Mm, not sure. Actually, let's stay on the road for now. I don't know what we're going to actually do uh, once we get there. How are we trespassing? Aren't we regionalists? Anyways. Right, so we spawned the looter. Cao Cao eliminates the bandit terror. Engage in a battle. Okay. We are trespassing. Interesting. Right, our wife doesn't like us. Well... Well, we don't like you either. We'll save the money. Maybe we'll recruit some new generals. Alright, so we can't reach him. But the idea is, I guess we beat him for the mission. A thousand gold. Okay, let's continue. Alright, this time they didn't run away. They actually attacked us during the end turn phase. That's great. Um, AI, I think we will suffer a crushing defeat. I guess the AI take into consideration that Z militias counter cavalries. Uh, but we'll definitely win this one. I'm going to fight it and cut it out. I'm not going to waste too much time on these fights. So let's keep going. Alrighty. It's not so hard when you kite them with your cavalry. As long as you don't charge into these guys, you can win this no problem. Alright, we finished the mission. They're still on the map, but we don't have to worry about them anymore. It's time for us to move into another commandery. Uh, we're gonna just pop into the river here and land triggering oh a different type of mission coming to an agreement we're in the guise of a Han official you confront the magistrate and mention that you have heard of irregularities in their account the magistrate laughs and readily admits this before offering the usual fee to look the other way oh we're taking the bribe. Um, credibility is increasing every turn. I don't see the reason why we want to rush like two extra turns of credibility, two and a half turns of extra credibility, uh, and, and turn down a thousand gold. Um, we still have to fight. Oh, it seems that looking the other way only left you open to an attack. Uh, the magistrate raised force and seek your head. I think this will trigger anyways. That's, that's my logic. There's no reason why reporting them wouldn't result in this. Uh, but we get to fight another army here. Same composition. Let's see. Any interesting characters to recruit? Uh, not really. Waiting for the more unique ones. Oh, we also need to recruit an extra unit. Right. Keep forgetting that. Um... Cao is a commander. You know what? We'll get a spear guard. Because our front line is a little thin of anti-cav right now. So we're just going to get that. And we'll pick an... Oh, I should have waited. I should have... Oh, we have this. Perfect. I was saying we should have got this before we recruited for the 8% discount. Yes, I'm that obsessive about discounts. Um, then we might as well go down this route. Um, there's other routes we can go. Uh, if we're staying in the south, we can go the green route and get ourselves the farmland upgrades needed for the rice garrison, uh, which I think is actually over here. Yeah, this is one of the few factions where you ever would consider going down the ever level granary uh, simply because our level 4 upgrades are stuck here. Uh, we need to build a grain silo first, uh, so you definitely want to consider going this route. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we'll get deployables. We can't trade yet, so. 
And that's that's it. Let's continue. All right, another fight where they think we'll delegate and lose. Um, gonna fight it again and uh, cut it out. See you guys then. Alrighty. Alrighty, we finished that mission for recruiting six units. John Brothers happening. Alright, we're gonna move towards Yangzhou. It'll take us two turns. We also leveled up. Um, we're trespassing, sure. Let's see. We need to go for leadership skills. But we also need to be fighting. Ah, leadership skills still very important. We're young men. We're going to be leader for a while. So we got to pick up all these leadership skills. And we also should pick up this one. Decrease cooldown ability. So very good uh, buffing ally type of general for Tal Tal. Um, nothing else going on. Let's continue. All right. Well, there's a eunuch. Um... Architect of the Jade Hall. Okay. Minus 15% construction costs. Not that bad. Uh, what else? Zhou Tai. Zhou Tai seems to come of age around this turn for a lot of factions. At least in a lot of my previews, I've seen him uh, in the pool. Uh, he's, he's nice, but I don't think I want him. We get a strategist here. Liu Hong. Hmm. We'll pass on all three. Alright. We are now in Yangzhou. A thief no more. You set a trap for the criminal by setting up a stall in the market with apples covered in red paint. Your men easily apprehend the red-handed thief who falls to their knee pleading for their life to be spared. They stole only to feed their starving family after losing all their money to tax collectors. We're going to hire him. Let's see who we got. Uh, we'll see after this. Tal Tal faces a dilemma. Your efforts have not gone on notice and it has come time that the capital requires your talents. The government has called you to travel to the Chen Commandery to relieve the current commander of their position. However, your father also has also stressed that he would pay for you to take on his title and land instead. Okay, so we get land. We can either take our father's land down south or go to Chen, which is basically our regular start. Since we've already seen our regular start, we might as well succeed our father. Plus, as I mentioned, the rice paddies down south are very good for us. Or we can be a stubborn boy and go with neither and start our own path and use our own money to claim unclaimed land, but we'll take Talsong's land. And Xingdu is ravaged by conflict. Looters. Okay, that's uh, urgent looting. Oh, we're teleported back from Yangzhou. That is strange. Um, okay, well we're back here against this giant army with trebuchet. Wow. Okay. I was not expecting this. Small town defense here. Let me think. Um, we get our dad's characters. That's our... Mom. Gracious host. Okay, we get a few generals, but they're not available to use right away. Hmm. The issue is, even if we could summon an army... Well, this is going to go away next turn. How are we going to beat this? Maybe we should have built up our army a bit more during the first three turns. Or first whatever amount of turns. Well, 
We're going to pop in here. They seem to be interested in going after the Lumberyard. Maybe the AI will actually have them keep going down south or something. Just to give us a little bit of time to build up. Well, I think it's almost paramount we recruit her now. So we have siege weapons to respond. Or else we will be the stupid people charging into the enemy formation. Uh, let me think. No rush. Yeah, I think we'll recruit her into the army directly. And we'll add... Probably should faction grudge. Our mom hate us for confederating be our factions. Our dad also hates us for confederating our factions. Hmm. I mean, this is usually what happens when you confederate and annex factions. Uh, the leader tend to hate you. He doesn't mind. We need him. We need a front line. I don't know if... Um, yeah, there's some cavalry units. Three. Two range units. A lot of purple infantry. One general. Hmm. I would like to have him, but if he's not available, we can use mom, right? There'll be a family bond and uh, we can get mom killed for a heal if we really need to. Don't tell her that. Okay, we get Tarin on the tree. So Tarin starts out in your faction, but he's too young. Okay, that's nice to know. What is this? Adopted son? He's our adopted brother? Dad, come on. Well, we're getting him killed. Li Bo Hao? Li Bo Li Bo Shu? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Tribuchets, we're gonna go with two of these. He does she doesn't have any Yeah, no flaming shot, no night battle. We'll save some money here. Pump these out. Use mom. Oh, he comes with a stacked retinue. Or we can grab Joel Tai and get some shock cavalry in. No, we'll use mom. Hmm. What do we need? We need somewhat of a front line. That might be it. Um, we'll get. Hmm, we'll get one more of these. I was trying to make it look pretty. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna spam these guys, even though they're not good against axe. Actually, these are probably the stronger ones. All right, I'm okay with this army, I guess. Let's see what happens. Okay, they all hate us. How come we only... Oh, small town. So we don't even have... Okay, we need to upgrade this. I'm going to rush it. So we have a garrison started. 
Dad's land's not so hot, to be honest here. Alright, we're going to put our wife on peasantry duty. That's it. Let's see what happens here. Okay, he didn't attack. He just stood there. Okay, keep standing there because we need some time to muster up our units. Uh, economy's down the drain. That's fine. It's not unexpected. Let's try to boost our authority a little bit. Keep everyone happy. Give her as much authority items as we can. Uh, Talso can get rid of this. Give it to her. We should have equipped the stone pig before we recruited for discount. We had two of them. And let's give her some evasions too. We'll get rid of the authority vest. Put it on our air. We'll get rid of this. She's fighting, so she gets to wear it. Okay, replenishment boost. Better than stone pig for now. Okay. I'm okay what's going on here. We just gotta wait for this army to... Yeah, we'll just wait for replenishment. This one we don't have to worry about. They're not that strong. Fishing port can definitely defend itself. Let's continue. Alright, they made their move against the lumberyard. We can't do anything about this. We're just gonna delegate away. Alright, the fishing port we can win. Oh, we can't win. They're not fully replenished. We have towers, though. Hmm, I'm not sure how we can deal with the general, but we have towers. Go give it a shot. Um, I'll cut it out, see what happens. Alrighty. Um, we just looped them around the towers and they got shot up and we won. We even captured him. Uh, quiet, scholarly, kind-hearted. Could be a good spy, but he's unwilling to spy for us. Doesn't have any items, we're just gonna release him. Alright, so... Yell Turban stories continue. It seems like they sacked it. Right, they didn't actually uh, take it. They just sacked it. So basically, they, they leveled the level 1 building away. Uh, which is fine. Uh, I'm gonna just go for cheap income for now. And what to do about this army? Well, the longer they stand on the field, the better shot we have against them. And plus, we're not done mustering yet, so we're not moving out. Yu Jin, okay. I mean, historically, he was our man, but our economy prevents us from actually grabbing him right now. He would be a good administrator. Well, actually, he doesn't have any traits for it. Oh, this one. No, no, no traits for it. Oh, all right. We get a horse. And we're just going to go to the next turn real quick. I think we're good. Just going to continue. Although, looking at the map, one thing I'm wondering, though, is... Since we're part of the Empire, I don't know how we can expand early on, right? We're cut off everywhere. We just have to go through someone's territory to start taking land. Hmm. We could trade. We could try to trade the High Empire for the Weapon Craftsman. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we expand, how the story goes, um, and what happens in the year 190. But those mysteries are going to be left to you guys. We're just going to get a good start here. Let's continue. All right. This is spring of 184. One turn before the big bomb. Mm. Ah, Xun Yu. Mm. He's also our guy. But we also don't have the money for him right now. Right, this army just standing here. We need one more turn and then we're ready. So we'll pick a reform. Oh, we have trade routes. Silly us. Yeah, it's, it's weird to do trade after a few turns. Uh, I'm going to trade with people far away from us again. Just 
in case we have to ever um, declare war on our neighbors. So Dong Zhuo seems to be the most loaded here for the trade deal. He doesn't... He might want food. That way we can get a little bit of cash from him. Ooh. 49, maybe? Wait. Yeah, 49 is good. And then we can get another one with... Luger might die. I don't want to trade with Sun Jian just because he's right here. Liu Bao, Liu Bao works. And are you willing to pay us... Maybe 48? Nope. 47? Okay. There we go. Used up our two uh, trade routes. Yeah, we're trespassing on people a lot. Anyways, we'll stay within our land for now. Let's continue. Alright, so the rebellion started this turn. A lot of people are still declaring war on looters. Alright, gotta kill the drone brothers. Really not our problem, to be honest. We're in the south this time. Huang Yet. He would have been a better recruit. Plus five campaign movement range. Also flaming shot. Uh, but they took the lumber yard. They didn't build anything here yet, so there's no garrison. Uh, we're fully replenished. We can get the battle started here. It's also interesting that they're in the city here. We can actually starve them out because they're in the city. And force them to come out and fight us or suffer through attrition. But what we're going to do is we're going to delegate the fight because um, I want to save a little time. I just want to see what happens after this mission. <laughs> Alright, we'll occupy it right back. Actually, we can loot it. It's level, um, it's level zero. We don't actually lose any buildings. So we can actually loot it for a little bit extra income here. Alright, we finally finished this. We get plus 15 credibility. We should start using it. We don't want to go over 100. Build a building. Okay. We're almost there. One more turn for that. Perfect. Uh, let's see what happens after we build a building. We're going to get another assignment so someone else can stay busy. Uh, extra food production. Yeah, that's the only thing we can do right now. Let's continue. Alright, so Huang Shao destroyed Tiao and we got... Oh, we built a building, but we got credibility, so we actually went over. We should have used some. Uh, tax collector attack, random event. Um, our economy is back online. Um, I feel like we're probably going to spend some time farming rebels and figuring out how to develop farther. Because it feels like we just ran out of missions. Right. So I think this is probably the end of our preview. We're going to do a little bit of a uh, proxy war to show you guys how that works. So for example, we can talk to Sun Jian here and we can ask him to start a proxy war. But because we're in an empire, right, we can't proxy war against other empire members. So the only people we can ask him to fight is say Han Sui, right? But it'd be so far, right, we get a value here. Look at the factors, right? He likes the idea. He thinks he's stronger than Han Sui. Uh, and the negative factor is how he views us.
because we're his neighbors, uh, there's a major threat issue. And then distance is a big issue too, and military street versus target faction. Um, so if you want to get it to work, perhaps pick a faction that's next to them. So Ma Teng and Han Zui are the two factions we can actually fight. So maybe we can ask Liu Yan uh, to Miao. fight in a war against Ma Teng. Right, so he likes this idea, right? But there's a balance of power between us and him. So we can actually get some cash out by asking him to start this fight. So that's an example of how that works. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, we got ourselves a little piece of land here in the south. And to expand, I think we just have to try to beat Sun Jian to it. Or we can just... Um, I think we can actually leave the empire if we want as well. Like, I don't think we're forced to stay in the empire. Yeah, we can abandon the empire if you want any time. Um, basically, you'd be declaring war with everyone else. Uh, risky move, uh, but definitely doable. And I think I just lagged out the game. Yep. Oh, there we go. That took a while. Look at this. Everyone will hate us uh, right when we do this. So I don't recommend it. Uh, I would just disband the army and farm some rebels for a couple turns. I'm sure once we get close to 190, you get some other events to kick you off um, from the ground up. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and come back next time. Bye.